Love Line, coast to coast. Yeah, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Gas over there. Dr. Drew, everyone. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And remember your Hippocratic oath, Drew. Okay. All right. Drew uh, claims to have some hellacious gas tonight. As he was telling me, he had hellacious gas. What I do, Drew? He farted my face. <laughs> I ripped a fart while he was explaining his gas. <laughs> you got to appreciate that. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's got a little bite to it. See, Drew is lucky because it's going to get tough in here, Drew, because I'm going to, we're going to be like a couple of heavyweights trading punches in the okay. center of the I, ring. I, I'm ready. Tonight I'm ready. Uh, my ass came loaded for bear tonight, too. This is the thing. The thing about uh, Drew is here's his advantage, and here's what I wish I had. Mm. I basically have the stomach of a goat. I can eat anything. I'm telling you, I, I ate one of those novelty size C's Easter eggs that was out on someone's stoop uh. in like um, January one year. I mean, it's been sitting out there for six months. I ate the thing fine. I eat stuff off the ground. I eat milk that's spoiled. I eat bad cheese. I eat stuff from last Christmas. Nothing ever happens to me. Onions and legumes and spices and nothing. I don't get anything. Right. I just get gas. For me, when I get gas, it's serendipity. Right. It's, yeah. It's I can't can't base it on anything. Now, a guy like you, Drew, you know. There's no way to load the cannon for you. Right. Yeah. For me, I just have to go into battle and hope I have ammunition. But there's no planning. I understand. guy like you, you know. I mean, Drew has threatened me before. <laughs> he, he said, I will eat scallions. And that'll be the end of you. See, you know your food. Yeah, I know my, my ammunition. I, I wish I was lactose intolerant. I wish I had some intolerance. Yeah. And then what I would do if I was lactose intolerant is I would keep a little wedge of cheese. You know those little mini Buddha little Gouda laughing, laughing, laughing cow, cow, cow yeah. pieces? Yeah. Yeah. I keep it in my wallet. Just, just a... <laughs> In case I had to go on a long van ride with Jimmy or something, I was in a plane or there was trouble, I'd pop that in there like Popeye it's drops, like, his, like drops his spinach. Carry a handgun or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, not so much, but uh, the Derringer in my boot. Nice. You know, just a single shot thing, something in case uh, some trouble occurred. I got caught cheating at a card game. Pow, I'd eat that cheese, I'd make my escape. I don't have that. So I don't know what to do tonight. I'm sad for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can all take pity on me. Pat? Pat, you're 18. That's right. What's up? Not too much. I uh, had a little problem tonight. I was having sex with a girlfriend. It wasn't the first time or anything, but my mom decides to walk in, and she didn't... I think she was a little surprised about that. Was this in your room? Yeah. Why did she just... Did she normally just walk into your room? Uh, no, I had a phone call. She came in to tell you you had a phone call? She came in with the phone. I see. And you just have sex with your girlfriend while your mom's Talk home, just wandering the around the house? Oh, well, it's, it's like 11 o'clock at night, and she's she's usually in bed by, you know, 9. Mm. All right. Well, uh, listen, you got to cover yourself next time. we got to get a little uh, barrel bolt for your door. <laughs> All right, so you're having your, your mid-sex with your girlfriend? Oh, yeah. You're on top. What position are you in? Uh... I was on top of her at the time. I see. And so what'd your mom say? Uh, she didn't say anything. She just said, here's the phone. She turned around, walked away. I just wondered if I should say anything to her. Or Man. Something. This is bogus. Yeah, I don't, I uh, don't really please. believe. Please. You know what was funny? Right. I never felt it. The yeah, whole yeah. time he was talking, yeah. I never felt it. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I, I was thinking bogus the whole way until until mom completed handing him the phone in the middle of sex. Yeah. How's that his name work? How's that even know, happen? No, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me make a, an argument for Pat. If it was a bogus call, wouldn't he say that mom freaked out and started screaming? Do you know what I'm saying? No, he's making up as he's going here. Really? Mm. I don't know. That's It's not a good payoff to a bogus story that mom hands the phone and walks away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe I believe him now. Maybe he's just one of those guys who smokes a lot of weed and he has no affect. Could be. Could be. Mm, try. Hey, Pat? I smoke a little bit of weed, not much. All right. All right, but anyways, yeah. yeah how old? I, I did how old? Get off of her, you know. Before, Thank you. Before the phone was handed. To how me. old is your girlfriend? She's seventeen. Okay, listen. You have a dad around there. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Well, your mom's probably going to tell your dad, right? Uh. 
Okay. <laughs> Listen, I don't care if it's bogus or not. It's not an exciting call. Yeah. Hey, you're 18. Just uh, get out of the house the next six months. Don't talk don't about be, it. Don't be doing stuff in in their house that obviously they don't want you to be doing. Well, maybe they don't care. Mom didn't seem to care that much. <clears throat> Did she? Yeah. And think about what an 18-year-old guy's like now. These days? <laughs> yeah. Orangutan. <laughs> Dan? Hello? You're 13. What's up? Okay. Well, um, I had two friends in the Santana shooting now. Um... One of them was, like, not really my friend. He's one of my brother's friends. He was a good friend to the killer, you know? And another one of my friends there, he goes to my church. You're, you're talking about the San Diego shooting today, yeah. right? Yeah. Which, by the way, we're going to be in San Diego tomorrow yeah, night. Yeah, speaking of San Diego. Let's, let's bring that up now before we get into this call. Yeah, what, what was the story? I just heard bits and pieces on this uh, in the news. This is a town right outside of San Diego, right? Yeah. yeah. Pardon me? East County. East County, which is right outside of San Diego? Okay. Thanks. And what happened? How many people were shot? Well, like, I think 15 people were shot. Uh, 13 of them were just injured and two of them were killed. Yeah. And this uh, young student came to school with, uh, what What do you have? Handgun. Uh, 22 caliber. Oh, really? He had a handgun and what else? 22 uh, caliber. That's about it. Was he able to shoot all those people with the handgun, huh? Apparently, he was in the bathroom shooting people, and they went in the hall, shot some yeah. people, went back in the bathroom, shot some people. And he talked, he, he apparently told people he was going to do it. And, and how? People teased him before. They were just, he was just joking around. Yeah, yeah, right. People, he was one of these kids that being abused. But uh, you know why he was sort of. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the irony of the human being. This is a kid that had been abused at home, and so, of course, his peers continue to carry that out. In, oh, in yeah. School. We can sniff out a good victim. And yeah. how old was this kid, Dan? He was 15. And so you didn't know him? Well, no. But your he was your brother did? My brother's friend. Or my brother's friend was like best friend to him. Wow. Really? He, yeah. he had a best friend, this kid? Yeah. And uh do you so you know somebody who got shot? Yeah, I know or, yeah. Well, it was a pretty small community, right? Uh huh. So everyone probably knows somebody. Yeah. Is he doing okay? Yeah, he got shot in the leg, he's doing fine. Okay. But my problem is uh, I'm, like, concerned about the guy whose best friend it was because um, the, the shooting guy, uh, he was, like, he aimed the gun at the his best friend, and he, he tried to shoot him, but I don't know, he ran away or something. I, I saw it on the news. I called him, but his line was busy, so I couldn't really talk to him. He, he tried to shoot his best friend? Yeah, he's, like, a mental illness or something. Yeah. Well, so you're worried about the guy? Yeah, I think he's going to have, like, a nervous breakdown or something. Well, well he's going to have a post-traumatic stress reaction, which a lot of the kids from Columbine had. But he'll, he'll be okay. He'll be all right. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure he's getting counsel right now. Sure. And uh, I'm sure they brought in psychologists and all that stuff, and uh, they get on top of it. Oh, this is good times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead there, Drew. So we'll be in San Diego tomorrow yeah, night. Yeah, San Diego tomorrow night. And we, I, I'd be delighted to hear from people, that, you know, if they want to show up and talk about this whole thing. It'll yeah. Be, it'll be at UC San Diego starting at 7 o'clock, so. All right. So uh, a very rare uh, Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew appearance yeah. in uh, we San had one Diego. In a year. I don't think we've ever been to San Diego. No. Toby? Yes. You're 23. What's up? <clears throat> I have a bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. Um... The first thing is, <laughs> is I've been in a, involved in a relationship uh, for about two and a half years with my boss, um, who owns the company. Um, that's not the hard part. The hard part is that she's married to my other boss. Um, what does that mean? Well, they're 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 a team, husband and wife team, what, right? What kind of business? It's an entertainment company in Indiana. Uh, in Illinois. Movie uh, theater? <laughs> what are we talking about? Pardon me? They, uh, they rent disco it, it, balls. Like a, like a disc jockey service. I see. Mobile DJ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Are you a mobile DJ? N no, it's, it's a little different. Yeah. We're an interactive entertainment company. Oh, okay, good. Because, uh, if I go to a wedding and, uh, hear that goddamn, uh... Celebration? Celebrate, uh, oh, if I hear that, or just uh, Moni Moni by uh, Billy Idol, I will put a that gun is, in my mouth. Yeah, I like the side YMCA. Yeah, what is that with you goddamn mobile DJs that it, you just take the, the crappiest songs? Uh, do people pick that? 
Yes. If do. I hear that uh, Bob Seger old time rock and roll or any of those other just god awful songs, you know Adam, I'm, I'm so sick of that. Uh, I, as I said, the last wedding I went to, I almost just jumped through the stained glass window. I, I really did. I just can't. I could just play something good for a yeah. change. Yeah, I agree. All right, buddy. Good. We're on the same page. So you're boffing your uh, boss's uh, wife and it's, it's and your boss. Right, yeah. Let me tell you just a shortened version of the story. Um, we took a business trip to. Uh, uh, Arizona mm-hmm. about two and a half years ago or so um, what happened was uh, we ended up having to share a bed because the hotel uh, people didn't bring up an extra bed hey, good times exactly well I woke up the next morning and she was uh, spooning with me yeah um, of course I was hard as a rock sure uh, she's a be- <laughs> she's a beautiful woman um, but to make the story even worse my dad is a pastor so I'm. Yeah, I wasn't really ready for this. All right. Well, okay. Now listen. How, how many encounters have you had with her? How many encounters? I'm not sure. How, how, many, how many times you've been with her sexually? Oh, I, it, oh, the story gets worse. I mean, it's it's been going on for two years. We're we're together quite okay. a bit. Are you, right. are you married too? Pardon? Are you married also? No. Is she in love with you? She says she is. Sounds like right. it. All right. I know. What about what about her? Does she have kids? No, no kids. Oh, that's good. Is she in her 20s also? Yeah, she's 26. Right. And what about her husband? Her husband I'm scared of. Yeah. yeah. He's, is... uh, he's an Italian guy. He's a bigger guy than me. This is why you don't get married in your 20s. This is what people in their 20s do to each other when they're not married. You know? Right. This is how people 20-year-olds behave. All right. So right. why doesn't she uh, get a divorce? She's, she's afraid she's going to lose the business. Uh, he's a very greedy person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah the lucrative um, business of a she started global the DJ. Business. Yeah, I see. Him, I see. He run. She she runs it. He kind of sits on his ass and right. And oh, okay. Funny. Listen, here's the deal. Uh, there's sometimes. Let me explain everything in life. This is. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm hearkening back to my roommate days when I <laughs> give this speech, which is sometimes you have a really bad roommate. Yeah. The guy may even be homicidal, but you know what? You don't want to get out because you got a uh, uh, two hundred and twenty-eight bucks wrapped up in a cleaning deposit. And you'll be goddamn if you're going anywhere unless right. you get it back That's and you were there first and all. Just, just get out. Yeah. There's sometimes in life, everybody, when you have to sort of cut your losses and just get out. Yeah. And that's my message to Toby, and it's also my message to uh, Toby's boss, which is Toby's hey, girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a bad relationship. This guy's an a-hole. He's not doing it. You're worried about losing this and that. Hey, you got you may have to cut a check, but you get out and you move on. Not only that, he was saying how she's the one, the brains behind the operation. Just set up another one. That's, That's right. right. That's right. You'll split the business, or Plus, sh- someone will sell their half to the other, the and courts, you move on. The courts aren't exactly bad to the women very often. No, they, they tend to be. Okay, so if she's in love with you, Toby, then uh, she'll get out. Do you want her to get out of the relationship? Right. You do? I very much Well, do. then give her an ultimatum. I have, and, it, it, you know, she she does, she pulls this crap on me. If you want to go on about your life and you can't handle the stress of this right now because I'm trying to get out of it and da-da-da, I'm doing my things the way I need to do them, and uh, it, it seems like every time we talk about this situation, it always gets heated, and yeah. she always wants to back out, and she has a nervous breakdown, starts crying, she gets a migraine, yeah. Yeah. all these things. Okay, she is crazy. I can't, to be honest right. with you, I can't just get up and, and move on in my life because... Toby, somebody's going to have to move, because she ain't moving, and right. you ain't moving, and someone's got to get on with it. Right. And this so one going... You feel I should just... Yes, you've, say, waste, you've wasted two years of your life. Not wasted. No, you got some good humping in Arizona in, but <laughs> here, here's what I'm saying, Toby. You need to tell her it's time to uh, ass or get off the pot, and yeah, if and you have to you have to be man enough to say to yourself, if she ain't making that move, then you're making a move. One of you's making a move. She's either divorcing her husband and getting on with you, or you're getting on. Or this one or the other. This will never change. Yes, there, or it, it'll never change. You'll just stay stayed, uh, locked in this holding pattern. All right. We rolling on here, mm-hmm. uh, Drewski. Hey, let's talk to uh, Fiona, who's uh, 16. Also from San Diego. Hey, San Diego. We'll be out there tomorrow night at uh, UC oh, San Diego. Guys. Well, come on out, and we'll, uh, we'll see you. Okay. It's um, open to everyone. Adam, I think you are so sexy and so funny. Yeah, well, wait till you see me tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm only 68. <laughs> That's all right, baby. 
Um, what is the statutory rape laws? Three years of the perpetrator. You have to be 19. <laughs> oh, I see. And Drew, um, you have taught me more in like one year of listening than in all my 16 years of life. Yeah. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. Okay. This is a very bizarre question. Okay. Um, I've been doing this since I was a little girl. Like, um, at night, I, I kind of go to my parents' bed, and it's so bizarre and so so weird in this society, and I don't know how to... I don't know what's going on with me. You go to and sleep in your parents' yes, bed? Yes. Yes, I do. Every, every night? You, you get Every night? Uh, almost every night. Does something well, wake you up? Do you have fearful dreams or something? Uh, or no, fun I'm night not terror? scared or anything. I just go. And Are where, you? and uh, they're both in the bed? Yes, they're both in the bed. Is, is I there... wouldn't sleep in my parents' bed if it was in the Playboy Mansion, if it was in the grotto, if it was floating in the grotto and both my parents were dead for <laughs> ten years. I still wouldn't go near <laughs> and that And everything bed. else was on fire around you. you That's right. It. would still not go on, I'd just burn. <laughs> and your folks are uh, okay with this? They're used to it after 16 years. Yeah, no, no. This, this no. is about them. This is not about you. Do, do you have uh, other siblings? Uh, I have two brothers. Yeah. You, you have hippie parents? Um, we're Mexican. <laughs> well, no, not really. What, what this is, it's not, it's not that you should be so embarrassed about this, but your parents are failing you on some level. Okay. And the reason it's sort of shameful and embarrassing for you is it, it's not... Hold it's on, not, do they have Mexican hippies? Uh, no, I don't it's think so. uh, illegal. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's outlawed. I don't know why it is, but they, they don't have. I don't think they have Mexican hippies. They, if they are, they have to pretend they're American Indian. Yeah, yeah. They make good hippies, those Mexicans. Yeah. They should really give it a try. <laughs> All right. So uh, but, wait a minute. The, How many? Hold on. Let me get. Let me figure out a couple brothers. of things here. Three brothers, How, three brothers right? Uh, two brothers, oh. and I'm the I'm the middle child, the middle girl. I see. There's three of you all together. Yeah. And uh, you guys all have your own room. Yeah, we do. And you you still would go sleep with your parents? Yeah. Every, every night? Uh, about five times a week. Any any uh, alcoholism in the family? Um, my dad. Yeah. He's got to be loaded he, in order to sleep through that. But he, yeah. he, quit. he quit. When did he quit? Um, before I was born, before he married my mother. Okay, all right. Doesn't your dad get an erection at night? Nice. <laughs> well, think about it. Oh my God. Well, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I'd roll over and hit someone with my penis. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Fiona's freaked out enough asking this question, for Christ's sake. I know, but doesn't it doesn't every man get an erection in the like morning? In the morning? Yeah. That question, Adam. What does your dad sleep in? Um, sweat pants. Sweatpants? I don't sweat know. Pants? Yeah, he wears like a pajama. I don't go summer. next to my dad. I go next to my mother. <laughs> okay. Well, what size bed? It's a queen. Queen. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to ask. Queen ain't that big. No. They'll no. fit in that. A 16 year old's not a small person. But I, I, I'm small. I'm, I'm about 5'3 and 95 pounds. But you yeah. know, just listen to her voice for a second. Yeah. It's not the same little girl voice we normally get. No. But it is. it has that underdeveloped quality to it. Yeah. Know? Are you a and virgin? No. <laughs> Your dad? What happened? Dad woke up? Um, no. I, I had a boyfriend uh, like um, a, a few months ago. And uh huh. Yeah. Hey, and your I, folks didn't mind him getting on top of you in the same bed? No, they hated him because I would run away. Like, I ran away like six times. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Was somebody hitting you at home? No. I, it's a lame reason. I was just bored and no. I just no. Uh, no. 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 What happened at home? No, I'm just a spoiled kid and I... No. I, I, yeah. You know? No. A any uh, physical abuse? Um... My mom, you know, she Ooh, your slaps me. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's physical abuse. The only kids that run away from home are being abused. That's it. Yeah. There's got to be abuse or kids don't run away from home. You know, the mo the Mexican moms are like the Italian moms. They're yeah. fiery. Yeah. <laughs> the dads are just, they're drunk. They're sitting on the sofa. They won't watch soccer. They don't got time to beat the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mental note, beat kids uh, tomorrow after I sober up. Yeah, so your mom, your mom whacks on you, huh? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Well, Any sexual abuse? No, no. No, this is this is this is the, the all this whole situation you're in is is because of the kind of parenting you've been exposed to. Uh -huh. And your parents while they abuse you on certain levels and that's what caused you to act out a certain amount and have difficulty dealing with your anger. They're they're not giving you the nourishment you need to complete the process of individuation. Oh. So at the same time as they're sort of pushing you away with the physical abuse, they're not giving you the opportunity to disconnect from them and, and mature and move away. 
they should not be allowing you to come in bed at night. They need Ugh. to help you stay in bed Ugh. and give you opportunities to grow and develop separately True. from them. Seriously, it's 16. Can you imagine hopping in bed mm. with your folks? Well, I, I didn't like being with my folks on Thanksgiving at 16. Like, the table wasn't big enough. <laughs> I couldn't imagine getting uh, between them in bed. Yeah. Oh. It's pretty wild. <laughs> Yeah. But but it's gratifying. It's, it's been per, the person that's being gratified the most is mom, oh. and mom's putting her her unwillingness to do the work of parenting and her need for gratification ahead of the kids' needs, uh. and it's bad for old Fiona. Oh. All right, all right, we got to take ourselves a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll speak to uh, Don, who's thirty. Well, mm. Another similar question here. Wants to know if it's okay to masturbate with three year old in bed with her. So let me just check real fast. Don. Yeah. You you want to masturbate while your three year old's in bed with you? He's asleep. Sleep. Well, hey, you're you're not using him like a vibrator. No. Okay, hold on. I say you know three year old's about right size. You you, you hold the kid's feet, push him up over there. Nice. You know what I mean? All right, we'll get back with uh, Don. Well, we should really have a competition between Don and Fiona's mom. She's the worst mom in America. After this, in here. Nice. I like Cisco. He uh, was in here. A year ago? I think so. And uh, he's a real fun guy. Yeah. I think he's enjoying his life. You know, you get that vibe from Cisco? Yeah. He's not angry. He's happy. Right. So, uh, Cisco will be in here on uh, Wednesday, and it'll be good to see him again. Don? Yeah. So, you're 30. Yeah, but... Yeah. I, I want to ask Oscar Drew the real question I called. I just made that up. Oh. Because I didn't know what to say. I couldn't believe I got through. All right. I, Adam, I think you're funny, but I resent the fact... All right, what's the real question? What's the real, real question? question? Oh, hold on a second, you screwballs. Listen to me, all I you... I try to protect you there, Don. Listen to me, all you MFers. You call under false pretense. You give a fake question. Then you admit you give a fake question. But you desperately need to talk to Dr. Drew about your real question. All right, I'm sympathetic to that. Spare me the uh, diatribe... And the critique on my presentation before you then get to your very important... You, you know what I mean? Do you really got to take a few beats out and talk to me and then end up where we're at now? With me yelling at you and you back on hold? You didn't want to just ask Drew the question? Let me just torture this Don for another second. Hey, Don? Yeah. Yeah, smooth move. All right, hang on for another few minutes, all right? All right. Let's talk to uh, Joe, who's 21. Yeah, um, I got a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just got married about two weeks ago, and my wife and I are both virgins. And uh, whenever we try to have sex, then she's got this excruciating pain. Right at the beginning? Um, w not right at the beginning. Just we, we start going in just a little bit, get about an inch in, and she just almost is on the brink of tears. So you get halfway in, and she starts crying. Yeah. I see. Um, she, we've tried putting up um, fingers and stuff up there, and those go up no problem. Uh-huh. And um, we, according to her, we, we, she thinks that I'm hitting the pubic bone. No. Why, why were you both virgins? Um, we're both religious. I see. What's your religion? Uh, Mormon. Good times. And uh, do you use lubrication? Mm -hmm. we got We got KY and Astro Glide. Nice. Make yourself a nice suicide concoction there. <laughs> and uh, and and use an ash glide and a KY and a little Vaseline. That's called a suicide. I see. Nice. And, and, and is still having trouble. Yeah. Mm. Is, is, she, is she tense? Is she nervous? Um, I, I don't think is so. Is she small? Um, she, one, one doctor has told her she's a little small. Yeah. But another one has told her that she's not unusually small and that everything should be fine. Was he having sex with her or was he examining her? No, he was examining her. How about you? How, hey? are you? how are you doing in the girth department? Um, I think I'm fairly average. Yeah, average. Okay. okay. All right. when, when she was in seventh grade, though, she, the doctor that told her she was small, she was having um, appendicitis and the doctors didn't know what it was. And so they, they thought maybe, you know, it was something wrong with her reproductive organs or something. So they... Stuck, jammed a couple fingers up there to feel around, and that really hurt her. She thought oh. that was really bad. Uh, bad I'm, times. I'm wondering if that's any kind of mental connection. Well, you wonder if something happened before that. That sort of really? set her up to have that kind of sensitivity to that acti that that happened. Yeah, I don't know. That seems like enough for a seventh grader. That that now she'd have vaginismus. 
chronically? Well, let me explain something about the vagina. The vagina is like a garage door, and the clicker is in the woman's uh, mind. I see. see you yeah. understand? Click, and, click. And she can click that thing open and click it shut without even knowing it. But if you do it before it's properly sort of installed, you'll break the spring? She could have broken a spring, I see. yeah. yeah. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is if, if if that was that could have been traumatizing for a young Mormon girl in the seventh grade to have a guy prodding around up there at a yeah, hospital but en enough to cause chronic vaginismus. No, but uh, enough to then with the religion and the virginity yeah. and just losing it now. I mean, this person is uh, retarded, and I don't mean retarded. No, delayed, way, delayed. But I mean, I mean delayed. the opposite of advanced. Yeah, delayed, delayed. And and so possibly uh, she's going through some stuff that she would have been going through at sixteen. Yeah, yeah. You no. Know, meanwhile, she's got a lot of religion and eh, keeping her legs together for uh, twenty-one years. And and uh, let me talk to Joe again. I think this is growing pains here. It could Drew. be. And Joe, you, she's seen doctors recently. Um, she went to uh, Planned Parenthood about three months ago. Why didn't she have a, a, just a regular physician? Oh, because she wanted to get on the pill. Yeah. And why doesn't she have a regular primary care doctor? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, why don't you get her a doctor that she can go to and to work through these things and figure out what's going on here? Okay. That's ridiculous. You guys are a married couple now, establishing a life. She's got a medical problem. It may or may not have anything to do with something going on physical. It may be due to her stress. It may be due to that previous trauma, but you sh yeah. it needs to be checked out. And if if it isn't anything, you need to be very careful and gentle and uh, slow right. with her, and it will, it will work itself All out. All right there, Joe. Take care. Yeah, this will work out. I'm not too worried about this. All right, Don, here we go, baby. What's the question? Okay, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, my question is, I was sexually molested. My sister was sexually molested by my cousin, and I... I came out with it when I was about 19 years old, and when I found, when I told my parents, my mom blamed me, yeah. and he, this this man sodomized both my brothers nice. before he even got to me and my sister. Very nice. Okay. So I'm wondering, now he's a DEA agent, how he, he bragged about passing lie detector tests. Yeesh. I was wondering, I mean, for me, I, I wonder if he did it to his children. Sure. You think? Well, people don't just do this, you know, as, as a hobby. And by the way, you could have made it on with this call, Don. I could have what? You could have easily made it on the show with this call. <laughs> I know you said you, you said you had a different call, so you could make it on in the show. This is acceptable for Loveline. Okay. Got a DEA agent who sodomized his cousins and uh, raped. Well, he, a, whoops! Excuse oh, me. Oh, easy, Sorry. baby. He messed up both my brothers and my sister and myself. He forced my brother to have sex with me. I mean, my sister's listening right now, and she told, asked me what the question was going to be, and I wanted to surprise her because oh, sure. she went one way and I went the other, you right, know? Her, her birthday's well, what, coming up, what, right? are the, what are the trajectories you two went on? They're, they're called trajectories. People either shut down sexually or they kind of get my going. My sister shut down sexually, and yeah. I was very promiscuous. Yeah, I, I was going to guess that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Don? Yeah. Okay, so... Well, there's a lot to sort out here, so let's start sorting. Okay. Uh, this cousin of yours, yeah. this is the son of who? My mom's sister. No surprise, because mom is the one that blamed you. Exactly. right? And we can bet that mom's dad was a piece of work. I don't know. My mom... Yeah, listen, because your mom's sister married an a-hole who, who did something to, undoubtedly to his son. Well, he died when he was... Uh, just a baby. He's six months old. No, All right. the mom. I bet she hooked up with another guy. To exactly. Get something. Exactly. Oh, she's with a big a hole today. Uh, that's the point. Shocking. Yeah. All right. So, Don, your mom. I'll bet you. What? What about? Where's your grandfather? Where's your mom's dad? My mom's dad died before we were all born. Did she tell stories about him? My mom is so secretive. She don't tell nobody nothing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You're. 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 They're, that grandfather. That uh, alcoholic, uh, abusive grandfather. You know. Something was wrong with him. He did something to your mom. And, Screwed and, him up. And and your aunt. And what about your dad? My dad died of alcoholism. There you go. My, there you go. My father never abused me. I know, but he's, your mom picked an alcoholic like her father. See, people that have had alcoholic parents will then get married to alcoholics. That's sort of a typical pattern. Okay, so the, I, I, I'm telling you, we know more about your family than you do just from hearing your your question the last three minutes. Yeah. All right, so everything's a mess. Now, what are your two brothers doing now? Oh, they're f more effed up than I am. My brothers are miserable. I'm in the fellowship of AA. Good. I one a heroin addict and one's in jail sort of thing? What do you mean? Your brothers? 
No, no, me. But your brothers, we asked how they're doing. No, my brother is a drug addict. The other one is de hard of hearing, and um, he just is miserable with life. I think he might be gay. He may not be. He doesn't want to be gay. My dad called him a faggot his whole life. Mm -hmm. I was a heroin addict. Oh, you were the heroin addict. Which okay. I, I'm not anymore. Yeah. My husband's in jail, and he's trying to get his life together. We've been together 10 years. We have a three-year-old son named Gunner. Yeah. yeah, that's good. It's always funny when uh, criminals give their kids names that are, you know, if they're like firearms, they're and they name like uh, Jesse no, James you know, I got and stuff like that. Boomer Esiason. I, I know it's his kid's name, but yeah. it, it is kind of ironic that you're, his dad's in jail. Gunner's dad is in the in the uh, who scout. <laughs> so, sort of funny if you think about it in a sad, pathetic yeah, it's way. Sad. All right, so you're in recovery, so that's good. That's the first bit of good news in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, doing any SA recovery as well? What? No, I went, I went to a treatment center for, at New York and a family for 16 months. For heroin? Heroin, alcohol addiction, crystal meth addiction, yeah. marijuana. you got to get your sexual addictions, too. you got to get that out there. And uh, how's Gunner doing? Gunner is awesome. I mean... Uh, I did a lot of messed up things to him, but I'm trying really... I mean, every time I tried to get this recovery thing, I did it for my son, I did it for my family, I did it for my dad, but this time I'm doing it for myself. How long sober are you? 12, 13 days. Yeah. I, well, because I, I took a hit of marijuana, so this is about honesty, so I uh, had to start over, but I haven't done any heroin or speed since All January right, listen, 12. listen to me. You got that three-year-old son of yours? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to treat him like a Ming vase, you understand? You cannot do anything more to him and screw his life up because this horrible, horrible path that your family's on has to end with this kid. You see how sexual abuse, what it does? It sets off a chain reaction that destroys several generations. Yes. It's amazing. Well, I believe that if I was never sexually abused, I would never have done drugs. Well, you, you would have been an alcoholic, but you wouldn't probably wouldn't have been a heroin addict. And your alcoholism may not have come on until much, much later in life. All right. So, uh, and listen, would have had all the listen you got to stay sober. And, <clears throat> and I'm not so sure about Gunner's dad, who's in jail. When's he getting out? Mm, I'm, I'm thinking it's sometime in April. But, you know, I figure if I can give myself a chance, i got to give him one. But I'm not going to go live with him. He's got to go to treatment. He's got to get his life together. Give him That's a year. Right. Maybe he can get That's right. That's a good plan. How many times a day are you talking to your sponsor? I see my sponsor. I talk to her. I have to call her every day. I saw her tonight. I go Great. to meetings every two yeah. times a day. Move in Perfect. to your sponsor's no, no. house. Two times a day meeting, daily sponsor. Sounds fine. All okay? right. And, and no going. more kids. Please, for the love of... Cr Wait a minute. I bet she's fixed or something. Don, are you fixed? Am I what? Wh why don't you have more than one kid? Am I fixed? Why don't you have more than one kid? Because I was smarter than the other people. I don't want any more. Good. I don't need to, you know, maybe in five years. How are you having birth control? What are you using birth control? I don't have sex. My husband's in jail. Good times. All right. Okay. Please, no more. That's how come she doesn't have yeah. more kids. Her husband's in the, in the can. Wait a minute. Didn't she say he was in there for 10 years? No, no, no. I didn't hear that. I swear I did. How long has your husband been in jail? He is not. I went to jail January, 2000, January 8, 2001 on his birthday, and I, he went to jail January 12th. He's been in there. I haven't seen him since. Oh, okay, so it's, all, it's only been since January. And I was on drugs that whole time. I never got pregnant, but I, we always used condoms or I okay. was on birth control. All right, baby. That's good. You take care of that one you got. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> see, you see... They see everybody. Listen, the only way to put an end to this is just for people to stop having kids who are in this, who are infected. I look at you as infected. But but here's here's the nice news: there are Thank treatments you. that work. Yes, and she's taking advantage of that, and so she's breaking the cycle. All it's, right. it's it's hey, it's a tough disease to break. Yeah. Thank God, uh, her mom had four kids. Her uh, molested mom went out and had four kids with a nice uh, alcoholic guy, and let uh, the brother have a uh, crack at all of them. Pantabulous. All right, we'll take ourselves a little break. Good times. Hey, yeah, my new favorite riff. Don't we normally play this riff in the eleven o'clock hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Ah, I don't care. You know, good times. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Doc Drew. We're going to be in uh, San Diego, UC San Diego tomorrow night. So uh, come on out. Seven o'clock. See how tall Drew is in real life. Nicole. Yes. You're seventeen. Yes. What's up? Um, I had a question. My boyfriend has oral herpes, and um, when he had a breakout one time, he well. 
he didn't find out until the next day what it actually did break out. He had gone down on me the night before, and I was wondering, can that be transmitted to um, vaginal herpes? Absolutely. Do you have any symptoms? Um, I noticed one little bump on one little bump on my vagina probably about a week ago, but then it, it went away. Hey, Drew. Eh, that doesn't sound like herpes. You said absolutely, but we've talked about this before, and it's sort of, I thought the jury was out on this. Yeah, because I thought that they were... Oh, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm mistaken. Whether you That's can transmit it to yourself. No, no, I was thinking of warts. Oh, yeah, no, no, this is herpes. Herpes absolutely can go from mouth to vagina, vagina to mouth, no problem. But you sound like you may have dodged that bullet. You would you would have more than just a little bump. Oh, I would? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's something that might need to get... You might talk to your doctor about it. You can check out. See oh, yeah, any. definitely. <laughs> um, but so they're not different strains at all? No. They both are in both places. Okay. And it's the same one uh, top side as it is bottom side. Well, they both appear in both places. They're two different viruses, but they both go to both. All, all you need is just a mucosal surface. You can get in your eye. You get it in your skin. Mm. You get it a lot of different places. Yeah, but Both you can't you can't give it to yourself. No, the auto inoculation is not that well understood. Yeah. Why can't you transmit it from one place to another? It's yeah, you could, you could scratch a uh, herpes sore and then scratch your nuts and not get it on your nuts. But, but if you scratch your eye, you probably get it. All right, well, I'm going to try that. Okay, put my finger in an infected uh, herpes sore and then uh, po yeah. poke it in my eye. That'd be good. Okay, good times. Good times. Both eyes? No, just one. Oh, just one. I want a control eye. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah to have uh, one left over for yeah. another experiment someday. Well, just so we can... Be, yeah, right. Okay. Brittany? Yeah? You're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, I have a, like, I don't know, it's a weird question. All righty. Well, about two months ago, I got raped by, like, three different people. Huh. And every time I have sex with my boyfriend now, we end up stopping because I picture it and it hurts. Sure. And I guess I'm just wondering how... Were you sexually abused as a child? Uh, by my stepdad. Yeah, magical that that would be the right victim. Girl, I'll tell you, man, you were like Kreskin. Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. Hmm. We were just talking in the break how people are so afraid... <laughs> So afraid to admit to how predictable humans are. You, you know, you get a certain input, you get a certain output. That's right. It. We knew by the fact that you were raped three times in uh, a few months back that you'd been abused. I mean, it's not your fault, and it's still sad. It, the sad part is that the victimizers pick up on that, and they, they take advantage of that. Yeah, but right, but when it happened two months ago, um, it was by one of my boyfriend and his friends. That's nice. Your yeah. boyfriend and his friends? Yeah. Well, you're still with your boyfriend, though, right? No, it was my ex-boyfriend. I see. And uh, what about your stepdad? Where's he now? Uh, my mom got a divorce with him, and she remarried another guy. Uh -oh. Another abusive guy. I don't, yeah. I don't trust that other guy yeah. either. He is it. How's, he, how's, the, how's, the, how's this guy? Uh, my stepdad. My step-stepdad? Yeah. yeah. Um, he does drugs, and yeah. he, I don't know, he's... And we'd, abusive. we'd magically yeah. predict that your mom's dad was an abuser, sexual abuser, and an alcoholic, too. Uh, no, her mom. Or mom was. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's good. Jeez, uh, uh, hold on a second. And <laughs> no, uh, everyone loves these rants, especially our program director. But I, I really, when I'm in charge, I'm going to treat people like, um, you know, they treat cows with uh, mad cow disease. Yeah, sure. It's yeah. like, hey, one's infected. Yeah. They've got to put a bullet in it. Mm -hmm. You know why? It puts the herd at risk. Yep. That, I, I would have done that with her mom and then her mom's mom. But just, we just got to start cutting our losses as a, as a civilization at a certain point, don't we? Yeah. We, we like, it's like we have a big herd here and some of them are infected. I think we got to put them down. Is it for the good of the herd? Right? For their own good. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about their own good. All right. Anyway, no, I don't. I don't, I don't right. Yes, Drew, you agree with me. I Thank you. People have unfavor unfavorably compared you, compared you with Hitler. It's unfavorably, yes. Brittany. Um. Yeah. You got to get some help, baby. Well, I have a. How can I like get over it? So uh, when I do have sex with him, I don't. Know you you got to get some help. It's gonna That's take a why. long time. You got to go to rape counseling. You in a uh, rape group, women's group. I did, but it didn't last. How long did you go for? For about two weeks. Yeah, you got to go for. Well, you got to go there, and you got to participate not just sit there quietly 
Well, when I talked to my mom about it, my dad, she tells my dad, and my dad says it's my fault. Is there, like, any way that it can be my fault? It's not. What, did you want to be a victim of a violent crime? Well, no. Okay. It's not your fault. You didn't ask to be a violent crime. Do you, do you really think your dad says it's your fault? No, that's the abusive a-hole dad that that crazy mom married. No, I know he's a piece of work, but you're talking about your biological dad, too, right? Right. Right. No, and I know the guy's a world-class a-hole, but I still bet he doesn't say it's her fault. He just sweeps it under the covers, and that's what Brittany hears. Do you know what I'm saying? But All right, that's neither here nor yeah, there. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, she, Brittany, yeah. you've got to take care of yourself. Do not get pregnant. Oh, please. Uh oh do you oh. have a kid? No, but I am pregnant. Oh, God. Baby, baby. How do we know that with that silence when you said don't oh, get pregnant? Baby. Oh, baby. Baby, what are you going to do? Keep going with this? It, but it's not by my ex, or it's not by my boyfriend that I have now. Right, it's by the abusive it's guy. Beelzebub. Right, right, by my ex-boyfriend. All right, me. can't you get an abortion? I'm not rich. You're not rich? No. Well, what are you going to do? How are you going to raise the kid? Wait, abortion, the government will pay for that. I'll pay for it. I really how do, you, how do you figure abortion compares at all to the the thousands of dollars it takes to raise a kid? Hey, Brittany, what, what planet are you are you visiting? Right Brittany, now? well, Brittany, how how pregnant are you? Uh, two months and three weeks. All right, if you want to see the pregnant through, what are you going to do with the kid? How about adoption for the child? I thought about that. That would be great. That would be great. Give it up for adoption. That would be a way to break the cycle of victimization that you're in. Get the, get this child set up in a family that really wants to have a child and has the resources and the health to do that. Is it too late to have an abortion? No. You have one week. It's never too late, baby. What? Uh, how much is an abortion over there in Michigan? I'm not. Well, uh, Minnesota? Are are you, Minnesota. Are you 46? Would be, I mean, nothing, I would think. How much is it? Uh... 300 400 bucks like four something yeah let me tell you it, it that's going to save you some money I, i'm telling you my uh abortion is like 400 bucks you know my dad spent close to 600 on me wow in your lifetime yeah and another 300 on my sister so that's a lot more than 400 dollars. wow yeah and do the math that's uh almost the uh, same as uh, like 30 percent or something at least that was the math my dad explained to me when I graduated high school. Ah, oh, Brittany, I spend, I spend more baby, than, baby, don't get you spend more on one weekend at Disneyland with those little more and more than applications on schools. Listen, do not listen, all of you. Stop getting pregnant. Stop it. Stop it. You're ruining the world. This kid in the hands of Brittany and her screwed up boyfriend. Does this kid have a chance? Do you understand? This is where every penny of our resources is going. Brittany's kid, everyone, that's why your taxes are so high. Do you understand? That kid is going to cost us $2 million. We got counselors. We got, we, we got probation officers. We got to build more prisons and uh, use up more resources. That's it. That's what's going to cost us. Do, do we understand that? Do we see that? Can we do something about that? All right. Brittany, yes, get an abortion, please, or give the child up for adoption, please. All right, let's talk to Sean. Sean, you're 24. Hey, guys, I made up my question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. I wanted to ask you guys a real quick uh, question, specifically to Drew. Drew, how, um, how do you as a doctor advocate the use of the Adderall, the dexedrines of the world, the children as young as six, when their brains are still wet, like Adam likes to say? Because when you look at the science on this, it's very clear that it improves outcome in terms of decreasing the potential of character pathology. What are you and talking e about? ADD and ADHD is using stimulants. I think it's overused in some areas. In some areas, it's underused. I think generally it should be prescribed by people that are experts, psychiatrists, that, are, that can truly diagnose ADD. It shouldn't be done by pediatricians. So they're giving this stuff to kids as old, as young as six and seven yeah, years it's old? a little young to begin with. But, the, but, the, uh, but I thought for sure we were creating speed addicts, so I looked at this data very clearly carefully and even in those kids who are addicts they have less addiction less severe addiction and their outcomes are all markedly improved with those medications all right and so i had to back off of that opinion because it's clearly something that works it's got to be used very carefully though with kids with the addictive gene as many ad ad add adhd kids have right. and listen everyone please stop worrying about the man start worrying about your own crappy kids would you there is no man there's just a whole bunch of guys 
And just because they have degrees doesn't make them bad. All right, we'll take a break. That's the love line of Adam Cross. Dr. Drew's answering his page right now. He's on the phone to the uh, hospital. I don't know why he had to do it in the studio where I can hear him, but uh, that's life in the big city, kiddies. All right, phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Forget about that fax number. Cisco in here uh, Wednesday night. There you go, Drew. You want to try wiping that jacket on the mic one more time? Mm, nice. <laughs> we'll be in San Diego, UC San Diego, tomorrow night. Come on out and say hi, kiddies. John? Hmm? You're 20? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, yes. What's up? Um, I've been with my fiance for about three years, and just about the last year or two, I've been cheating on her mm-hmm. quite often. Why has she been a fiance for three years? No, has well, been no, a fiance, fiance for three years. No, I've, I've been with her for three years. Right. You guys just got engaged six months ago. Something like that. All right. Why'd you engage if you were cheating on her? I really care about this girl, and it's it, when when it happens, it's when I'm drunk. When mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I, I get totally slop ass drunk, mm-hmm. and girls, I don't I don't know why, but All right. girls get drunk and they want to, you know, right, All right. Get in the sack. Sure. Well, you're uh, you're a piece of ass. I'm sure. What do you do for a living? I'm I'm, get, I'm getting construction out of you. I'm an auto mechanic. Oh, I was thinking I had that metal. That little metal thing that goes up my spine, too. <laughs> All right, so, uh, John. Yeah. Uh, can you stop getting so sloppy drunk so you then stop cheating? I really like to drink. All right. Well, you're, you're, you're heading for uh, a what you call a white trash kind of life, <laughs> working on cars and getting loaded and cheating on your wife. Uh, I mean, I work on cars because I'm, uh, I'm opening my own restoration shop in a few years. With a couple of my buddies. Right. Not, not if you keep drinking. Right. In Maui? Yeah. No, I mean, I don't drink that often. It's just like a weekend thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you get you, you get sloppy drunk. You're not a very good drunk. Uh-huh. You, you make bad decisions. And you, you listen, alcoholism is, is defined not by how much you drink or how frequently you drink, but by the consequences. Yes. And you're having tons of consequences here. And you're just not willing to change. That's alcoholism. Right, I mean, I've I know all that. I've been in uh, rehabs a couple of times. Oh, magic! Just on the weekends, yeah. Well, why don't you include that in the history there that you've been addicted for a long time? No, no. I mean, I used to smoke free trees all the time. And that was my th- well, that's weed right there. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was a big weed smoker every day, all day. Well, right. now, now you switched over to alcohol. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, I it's the same thing. Hmm? Hey, listen, John. All right, let me explain something. You can uh, you understand this because you understand cars. And they, these guys, uh, they, they, they can think, okay. You got that alcoholic gene, okay? Yeah. yeah. And that's going to predispose you to getting hooked on stuff. You were hooked on weed, and now you're hooked on booze. And sex. Now, I don't care how much you, you drink. The point is, is it's having adverse effects on your life. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, you gotta ha- you're going to have to stop, or it's going to... You're going to spiral down with it, all right? You just switch from weed. You just you're cross addicted. You're just I don't know why you're arguing now. with us. You're making our point. No, no, I mean, the, the the actual question was: I mean, what do I do with her? Uh, she doesn't know. All right, don't tell her and don't get married. Don't and do anything. Don't to, have you know, any kids. Get in recovery. Don't make any decisions for the next six months and get going back in your program. You know what the hell you're supposed to be doing. You've been in treatment before. So, yeah, but we. United hey, States. listen, John. What do you What do you want? What do you want? I mean, I want to know uh, what do I do with her. I what mean, did I just you, tell you? I, I, what do you mean? What do you do with her? You stuff her and you have her mounted on the hood of your car. <laughs> you get in the program. You don't make any decisions for six months. You let her get involved in codependency recovery. At the end of that six months of active involvement in recovery, you think about what you want to do at that point. But don't do anything now. Do you have any kids? No. Oh, thank God. Yeah. We, we Please like don't no, we get like her you. pregnant. Please. Uh, her wasn't the problem. Uh, one of one of the uh, other girls just had an abortion with my kid. Okay, good. That's all we need is another one of you running around. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, listen, really, don't uh, just don't be... Uh, look at look in the mirror. Tape record yourself talking once in a while. And that, just don't become this pile of white, drunken trash, all right? Yeah, I don't uh, see right. myself as white trash. I know you don't. That's part of being white trash. 
<laughs> this is <laughs> screwball. Listen, all you, just take a look at yourself. Just just take your life and assess it for a minute. What are you doing? Now describe it and then sit back and listen to somebody describing that life. Take your that's life you are. and write it down. Yeah, would that, you? That's what you become. That's who you are. I got a fiance. I'm cheating on every other weekend. I'm no. getting sloppy drunk. No, I'm a 20 year old guy. I've been in rehab multiple times. I've switched now over to alcohol. And when I drink, I get loaded and I do crazy ass that gets me in trouble. I, I just don't want to do. Knocked up some <laughs> bitch I was screwing on the side who but, just had an abortion. But in a couple years, I'm going to open up a restoration business with no. my buddies no a you're few not years down the line. no you're not that's right believe me in a few years you're gonna be a lot worse shape than you are now yeah you're, you're gonna have progressed your disease that's right that's right tony yeah you're you're, you're 16 yeah uh, what's up um i've got this um problem i'm addicted to pornography and it's been getting me into trouble lately how well, today I just got suspended from school for looking at it on a school computer. Yeah. Okay, what's your question? Um, is, is there, like, any way, I mean, this, I mean, is there any way I can avoid that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been trying, I like, whenever, I may, I always get on with the intention of, like, checking my email or something, well, but then it I, always, like, deviates. Well, but some of that is sort of normal 16-year-old impulse. The problem is that you do it at school, and you can't contain the impulses, and you sound kind of, uh, not... Bogus? Com- no, no. Yeah, I get a little vibe. Well, that. maybe. I, I, I'm getting not comfortable in his own skin kind of thing. And uh, I not, I'm not sure it's all about the sexual compulsivity. I think there might be something more going on here. Yeah. Or is bogus. Tony? Yeah. What what were you looking at today? Well just just women and stuff. No. What site were you on? Um, I was on some um sex files thing. It's like a newsletter that can be sent to my email and I was just it came out of my email and I did and I checked from there. All right. That's specific information. I'm all right with that. And uh, a, 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 were you ever sexually abused? Um, no, not that I can remember. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure this is that. I think this All is right. just more All right. obsessive compulsiveness, depression, those sorts of things. Well, you got to contain yourself, everybody. No, he, need, he needs, you need to talk to someone, don't you? Get an evaluation. Think he's depressed? It's something, something going on. How about, Drew, how about this sort of inherent therapy in containing yourself and, and disciplining yourself? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Containment is the ultimate goal, isn't it? It's not like it's been for the last 30 years where it's, hey, hang out, do, go for it, do whatever you want. It's your world, you go for it. No, no. It's about containment. That's health. No, but here's what I'm saying, everybody. And uh, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, Drew. But I'm saying if you are on a diet and you think, God, I want a hot fudge Sunday right now. And you start walking to the refrigerator and you stop on the way and you go in the next room and uh, you skip rope for 10 minutes and then you uh, eat a salad and go to bed. You got stronger right there. I mean, uh, that that's worth a trip to the therapist's office <laughs> right there. You basically started ahead of direction, stopped yourself and did uh, d- discipline yourself. And that's man. If you can, if you can rein yourself in, if you can contain yourself, if you can discipline yourself, if you can stop yourself from doing those impulses and redirect yourself, you're going to have the world by the tail. Mm-hmm. And if you can start training yourself like that early on, you're going to get far in life. And there's a real strength in that. And the more of those you do, the more victories you have and the stronger you get. And that doesn't take a therapist per se. That's just a sort of being cognizant of, of your situation mm-hmm. and realistic. You got any sleeping pills, Drew? For tomorrow night? No, I mean tonight. I wash them down <laughs> with some booze when I get home. Annie? Yeah. You're 16. What's up? Um, okay, I have a question because on Saturday night, I lost my virginity to my boyfriend. Um, mm-hmm. We've been going out for two months, and I'm just very scared that maybe I'm pregnant or something because... What did you use for contraception? Well, I used a condom. Banana peel. And it was it was spermicidal, like it was a Trojan, it was latex, so... Um, did I mean, it, it, did it break? It and that kind of thing, but... It didn't break? No, I'm not sure because um, I never asked him 
and I never really checked. But um, I would I think mean, he would have been freaking out if it had broken. Okay, I'm just I'm really really scared because I mean like it's my first time and that kind of thing. And I don't know. Are there any signs that could happen like if I am pregnant or not? No. No. Well, how long ago was this? It was Saturday night. No. Oh, all right. No. How long does it take you to have a kid? Like three weeks, a month, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Nothing you can do now. Okay. Well, is it morning? Uh, no. You can take morning. Yeah, I'd be like eight hours, huh? It's seventy-two hours. Okay. But uh, Sunday, Monday, where are we? Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could tomorrow, I suppose, but I don't think it's necessary. Use the condom. He presumably didn't fall off inside you. Uh huh. Didn't. But no. maybe it's time to start seeing the doctor, though, to get proper contraception and get your regular pelvic exam. Yeah. Um. I had a question about that too. Um. Do I have to tell my parents if I want to get the pill or? Nope. No. Gotta go to Planned Parenthood. And you stuff? go anywhere you want. You, you have a right to confidential health care. Okay. You just tell the doctor you don't want anybody hearing about what you're talking about, and that you have a right to that. It's illegal for them to talk about it to anybody. Okay. Um, how much is the pill usually for, um, like, a set or whatever? Um, I, I mean, I'm financially secure. I just kind of wanted to know. I would like, think about twenty dollars a month, something like that. Yeah, 20, okay. 30 bucks, and then then they sh- they shift it around. Sometimes yeah. they lower it. Sometimes your insurance kicks in. Yeah. yeah. Why you you have money? Yeah. Um, Why? <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? What do you got money at sixteen for? Just because um, I I'm, I live in a nice area and <laughs> my parents send me to a prestigious high school and it's just like if I had if I had to talk to my mom about something like that I could probably just ask her you know and <laughs> I work at Starbucks. <laughs> oh really? So yeah, so I have I have money. <laughs> you get tips and stuff. Of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, baby. Good times. <laughs> get, get 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 your health care going. Take care of yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right. See. Uh, let me tell you, Annie, we don't have to worry about. She's all right. She's fine. She's she's all right. She's worried about getting pregnant after uh, mm-hmm. having a condom. She works over at Starbucks. Yeah, it's good times. That's fine. I, I don't like when kids have money. I always hated that. I mm-hmm. never had a goddamn penny when I was a kid. Never. 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 It was a weird feeling. I got used to it, but it's like... Going out to eat and always begging my buddies for bites of their burger and all mm. that kind of stuff. Mm. And I hated that. God, never had that. John? Yes? Drew, did you have a job when you were growing up? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Where'd you work? I swept streets when I was 13. I was a security guard when I was a doorman somewhere. And I was really? A lifeguard. Did you, get, did you get tips as a doorman? Yeah. Oh, good times. John? Yes? You're 19. What's up? Um... About two years ago, I was I got drunk with a bunch of my friends, and I was too drunk to go home, so I spent the night at this guy's house that I just met that night. Yeah. And and I later on found out that he had molested me, and last how did, year... How, I how did you find out, that out? How did you find out? Um, just he mentioned it to one of my friends. No, please. He found his uh, graduation yeah. ring up his ass. Yeah. He... He mentioned it to one of your friends? Yeah. How, how did it come up? I don't, I don't know. He just brought it up to me, and then, like, last year... He... No, wait a minute. No, no, no. You're not getting away from this. Wh- the, who was the friend that he told it to? Uh, the friend that took me, took me over to that friend's house to go drinking. And, and, and how did this come up as, as a topic of conversation? And wh- what exactly did he say that he did? Um, I I think my friend knew about it, and then he was just like casually asking, "Well, what have you done lately?" Or some I, I didn't bother to ask. Hey, your friend knew about it. Yeah. How did your friend know about it? Because he asked the guy. He because I kind of mentioned the the possibility that something like that. happened. Why did you think something had happened? Mm-hmm. Because I I thought I was like delusional or something because I that was the first time I went drinking so I was like what do you what made you think something had happened because I, I I remember waking up and just just panic and he was doing it to me and then I what was he doing he he was just like doing a blow job and that and I I just, I just freaked me out and and so and, you mentioned that to a friend your friend brought it back to this guy. Yeah. All right. So now what? And just a year ago, I found out from that same friend that he went to jail for that. And then just recently with my fiance, I've just been really sexually just shut down, just 
not wanting it at all, and she's just like, right. what's wrong? Well, wait a minute. Now, first off, what's up with your friend who brings you by uh, Joe the Molester's place that gets you loaded and drops you off there? And what kind of jackass is this? Well, I'm no longer friends with him anymore. Well, that's good. The, that's good. Situation. All right, this is this is a one-time deal when you're uh, loaded as hell, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why why are you engaged at 19? I don't know. It just <laughs> happened. How old is she? She's 19 also. Are you doing any, any other drugs now? Or alcohol? N no. Nothing? No. No, you, you you got loaded, and that was the first time you got loaded, and you got you got out of your mind, and uh, this guy took advantage of you. And by the way, uh, you know him blowing you to me ain't taking advantage. <laughs> I mean, I I mean I know he he's a victim. That's molestation light. He's or definitely something. well, he's definitely a victim. But listen, if someone wants to give me a BJ while I'm passed out drunk, uh, I have more power to him. Enjoy. I, yeah, I'm, I may uh, they they may find an extra twenty in their wallet when they leave that day. I mean, talk about low self esteem. I'm gonna wait till this guy passes out. I'm gonna give him a BJ. What the hell's in it for you? You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're, you're gonna rape, rape. Get something for yourself. Oh, what the hell happened? A guy passed out. I sucked him off, and then I went to bed. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see where you really enjoy that. I mean, all the perks of blowing a guy while he's drunk. I guess, you know, nuts probably uh, smell like a pier. He's been sweating all night. So there's probably like a pee pee hanging out of him. Oh, that's nice. But also, the other thing, too, fellas, is uh, how you get the erection and go with it. Uh, it always worries me a little bit. I don't think he's John's gay, but. Uh, how are you so loaded in your penis response, you know? And then you don't know where you are. 19, I guess though. Some, uh, all right. Here's the deal. Ma get some counseling. It could if be it's, incorporated if it's into a nuts. dream. Okay. Don't get married yet. No. You're 19. Yeah. You got issues. Don't get married. Stay engaged. Nice long engagement. 10 years. Talk to therapist if you want because of this. Uh, but don't make it rule your life. Yeah. You, you, you got loaded something happened move on this guy's a criminal i'm glad he's in jail i'm sorry it happened you can move on okay let's move on juliet hi you're 16 what's up okay um my problem is i've i'm very self-conscious a lot of my friends say i'm pretty and all but um i feel like having uneven boobs is like a huge secret uneven yeah like a c cup and a b cup well you're 16 they may come out you know they may yeah, I'm almost Equalize. 17 in like a month. All right, you got a couple more years to go. Relax. Um, Relax. It's very common. Really? Do you, have you heard of Bluffant? Those pills that you take? They're no, like please, Juliet, don't. It's nothing. It's nothing. Are Bluffant? You sure? Oh, please. Are these pill, what are these pills called? Bluffant? I heard there's now an infomercial about stuff you can rub on your... It can rub on your breast and it can enlarge them. Yeah. And I was talking to a woman I, over at Sony tonight who said her her girlfriend is the one that was the model in the that shows the development. She had implants. Oh yeah, she did. Yeah, I tried rubbing some of that on my dork. It didn't work. I mean, it worked for a few minutes and That's then exactly what the guy said as well. If those actually work. The guys been putting them on their penis. Yeah, Be, yeah. penis. I put on my some on my bicep and yeah. the rest of my dork. Yeah. No, I just think that I'm just such a turn off. Like. No, no. Why don't we explore it. more why you have such low self-esteem? I've it's got a, very low self-esteem. No kidding. What's the bigger? What's that all about? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna venture a guess. Ballet. No. Ice skating. No, no. <laughs> uh, Eating disorder. No. Perf could be professional dad. Maybe an attorney. Maybe doctor. Tied up in his work. Gone. What if I get older? Do I have to get hey. like, an implant? If you need to, you can always do that. There's well, no problem. What's your dad do for a living? My dad, I'm not sure I don't talk to my dad. Mm. When did he skate out? Um, I haven't talked to him in years. And you don't know where he is? No. Why? Well, I do know where he is. Um, my little brother has contact with him, but I just do not talk to my dad. What's he do? Um, I think he's a, he's a truck driver, I think, Ooh. but I think he switched to something. Like what? Yeah. He, like, drove around the country. Kind of thing. He, he does surgery now. Yeah. Surgery. All right. Your dad. Your dad screwed you. Screwed you up by leaving you alone. Really. And now your self esteem's bad. Really. He bought me a horse. Well, really. 
Yeah, he did. It's interesting uh, to uh, try to try to regain something there. Hey, I, I wish my parents would have attempted to buy me off. That would have been nice. Yeah, but then I moved back to my mom, and he dumped it on me. Now I have to work for her. Okay, but but listen, your dad abandoned you. He took off. I mean, when's the last time you saw the guy? Um. Well, I've talked to him on the phone a couple times. We're okay when's the, now. Okay. But. Okay. Hey, Brainiac. When's the last time you saw the guy? Um, a couple of years ago. I just started talking to him on the phone. I kind yeah, of forget about. It. We don't care about the phone. Yeah, yeah the I guy. The guy abandoned you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you don't feel that good about yourself. No. And now you're focusing on stuff that doesn't really matter. Yeah. How are your friendships? Um. Well, I have lots of friends, but good. they come and go. Well, keep some steady friends around. Yeah. yeah, I'll try. Yeah, focus on your friends and uh, d don't worry about... You yeah, know. I've gotten trouble with drugs and stuff, too. Mm. All right, Just stop. Don't worry about pleasing men, okay? okay? I'm the only man you should have to please. Do you hear me? All of you. All women. Mm. That's right. Okay. It's a nice focus. Uh, they should be the Zen of Corolla. <laughs> Let's focus on one man to please. Yeah. Can we do that I nationally? Can, I can see the cosmos now. Yeah. Let's yeah here's how to please the Corolla. Yeah. Well, let's make it easy. You guys are chasing after these uh, screwball, alcoholic, abusive, abusive guys. I just sit at my house, unplug my phone, and watch TV. I don't abuse anybody. Mm -hmm. That burns too many calories. Sure, I'd like to abuse, but I don't like to get up, so I'm torn. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like abuse or get off the sofa. Well, I'll sit on the sofa and think about it a little longer, and then I eventually fall asleep. But let's all focus on me. That's a very good point, Drew. I'm glad you brought that up. Have me be the universal father figure for all you uh, for all you lambs that have uh, strayed from the herd. Hmm. We will uh, take ourselves a break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Colleen. She wants to talk about that uh, horrible uh, shooting today that took place in a San Diego school. I guess it was a high school, right, Drew? Yeah. yeah. All right. After this. Well, you'll be glad to know Drew's farted up the studio. What about the Hippocratic Oath, Drew? Doesn't that prevent doctors from farting? Not in self-defense. Couldn't you make some noise when you fart like I do so I know? Just see so some novelty enjoyment. When I fart, my ass makes a trumpet sound that heralds the arrival of the smell. But not you. You're like a green beret. You come in under the, the, the uh, cover of night. Cloak of slide yeah. in and then uh, kill your victims with piano wire. <laughs> You understand? Whereas my gas, it's more like a British soldier, like a red coat, just marching straight at the enemy. Trumpets blaring, flags waving. That's you. You it's slide in. Yeah, you You're like an show. assassin. An assassin. Colleen? Hello. Hey, you're 23. What's up? I am. Um, I have a couple of quick comments. First of all, I just want to say I'm in complete agreement with you, and when I run for office, I'm all for sterilization. Ah, thank you. For the the dramatic. And also, uh, you know, the issue um, in Southern California today was two deaths and 13 other people by a 14-year-old in uh, the school. And it's just astonishing to me. I just heard on the news President Bush made a comment that uh, we need to teach our children right and wrong and some moral values, and that will fix the world. Mm. And I just, you know, have a comment for everyone out there that this is who our president is right now, and he thinks that teaching children right and wrong, that they didn't know this prior. You know, I would really love uh, a study on Columbine and all these other incidents with these children, how their family life was, because I will guarantee you that there's something matter that these kids are crying out. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we have no doubt that, that there's something going on in their homes. I mean, it's However, it's an interesting point, though, that it turns out that emotional, cognitive, and moral development do tend to parallel, run parallel courses. So to me, when I hear people call for moral development, mm -hmm. I, I agree with them. But it ain't going to happen without the emotional development and the intellectual, the cognitive development. Well, and it's, 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 it's like just saying no to the <laughs> junkie or addict. You know, it's like, uh, okay, that's nice, but what does it mean? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't get that's anything right. done. Just that's say right. no. Uh, come on, let's all be good people. No, we got to get in and dig at these problems. You know, it, it's like it'd be a dentist, uh, you know, telling you uh, to just uh, fix your own cavities through good positive thought. And we got to get in and do some drilling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's work to be done. Another comment. Um, also, there was an adult neighbor, I think it was, 
And because, uh, you know, as in Columbine, there was threats made a couple of days previous. Mm. And so the adult neighbor, he was just distraught saying, you know, I wish I had listened and just trying to tell everyone out there, you know, take this seriously no matter what. Now, l- let me, uh, off, off these what kids, happened to the kid? Did he kill himself? No. no he's 14. He, but it's interesting, the raid, these kids are... are he's are, in juvenile hall right now. Yeah, he's he's being up. charged under Prop 21 as an adult, 14-year-old. I see. And what do he have on him as far he as the weaponry? Right? 22 caliber, I think, and and they're also, uh, they found, they searched the house, he lived with his father, searched the house, found seven other guns. Yeah. Well, that's the, here, here, here is the issue. These kids are very disturbed. They're often suicidal themselves, and rather than turning that rage on themselves, they first turn it outward on other people. And it's the accessibility of guns. Mm-hmm. That's the final sort of straw. And I love how Bush couldn't comment on gun control at all. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, we, 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 I don't even know where to start with He's people. He's an idiot. Well, yeah, he may be an idiot, but uh, listen, those of you... Half th- the American people are idiots for voting for him. Are, okay, well, but, but Clinton listen. was the same kind of idiot. We had the same problem. We were doing the deal with these issues when he was in office. Yes, that, we had Cal- Columbine while Clinton was in well, office. I mean, like, you know, to me... All right, hold on a second. To me, when you focus on the president yeah. or the problems of this, the ills of society, it's, 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 it's really... Uh, you're, you're being way too simplistic about the problems of society. These problems were here before Bush got here. The yeah. problems will be here after Bush gets here. Those of you who like to uh, think that uh, if, if, if we had a Republican or a Democrat in there or whatever, whoever side you happen to fall in, it'd be a utopia, please, yeah. please close your eyes. You won't know the difference. You don't know the difference. Well, you I really I, I don't. told you, I, I, Clinton. I predicted many of his behaviors when he I, he scared the hell out of me because I could see you know all of his pathology. It was obvious to me, and he did not disappoint. But he ran a great administration. So this is things. These guys can run good administrations and still be. Listen, it just doesn't. Ideas. It doesn't. I know you're American citizens, everyone. It doesn't affect you that much. Take care of your kids. Uh, here's who. Who's, who here's who. All you need to worry about your boss, not Bush. Your boss at work. Make him happy. Your life will be good. Thank you. Scott? Hey. You're 14. What's up? I was, um, I was actually at Santana this morning. At the uh, Santana's the community? Um, the school. Actually, that's the school that's... where the shooting happened. I see. And um, I was actually about 20 feet away. Oh, my God. Yeah, it scared the hell out of me. And, but I don't know. I just called in to say, like, most people, they always say, you know, gun control, gun control. But I really think they should isolate the people. And try to get, you know, help for them instead of the guns. What was this kid like? Did you know him at all? Um, I hung out with him like once or twice. Yeah. And he seemed completely normal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, here's my feeling with gun control is, yeah, I'd like to take care of the people myself, but just in case they snap, let's not make it easy for them. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Uh, I mean, the NRAs, I mean, they're really idiots. They really are. They fight tooth and nail against, uh, you know, automatic yeah. weapons and banana, you know, 50-round oh, banana know. clips. And Oh, you in trouble there, Scott? Uh, I don't know. Hold on. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, check. Shh, shh. Mom came in? Yeah. 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 Hold on. My sister's bothering me about a CD. I'll be right back. Just uh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll, we'll talk amongst ourselves. Here. We'll just wait for you. All right. Speaking of San Diego, we're going to be out there tomorrow night. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know what kind of shape the community is going to be in. Flo. Hello. Yes, you're 16. Yes. Um. Hi. Um. I was sexually abused by my uncle when you were about two. No, I was in the fourth grade. Sheesh. And um, I tried to tell my mom, but my mom was like, she doesn't believe me and everything. Mm. So it's like I don't know. It's like. It's like no matter how hard I try to tell her, she doesn't believe me. Well, why don't you tell somebody at school? That's your mom's. Like I have. I told people at school, and they taught. They told my mom to come in, and she did. And they taught her, and she still doesn't believe me. Hold on a wow. second. Hold on. Is your uncle your mom's brother? He's a, like a step. He's a step uncle because like he's a, a friend of my mom. Like no. they're so close, you know. Yeah. All right, so not he's uncle. not your uncle. Yeah, I see. And uh, you know, usually they make him your uncle so they won't molest you. I think that's that's uh, what the the carrot they dangle in yeah. front of in the. This friends. show it seems to be some sort of anointing process where they actually become the molester. 
Mm -hmm. Right. You should yeah. avoid the term uncle. As soon as you label. And so yeah. that. All yeah. right. And she is. Does your mom still hang out with the guy? Um, no, he's dead. Oh, he's dead? Yeah. Oh, good. His brother, his brother, like, came in the picture. Uh -huh. So it's like. Wait a minute. It, where's your dad? My father. They're the, my parents are divorced. Mm hmm. And it's. I have no communication once so. Whatsoever with my father. Okay, and how long did this guy molest you? When I was in fourth grade until last year. Mm. Until last year. Yeah. So um, he got like five, six years going on you there. Yeah. Oh baby, that's uh, that's yeah. quite some time. And this went on. I mean, did you have sex with him? Um. Yeah. And where would you do this? In my room. And where was your mom? My mom was sleeping, and it's like weird because I I think she like knows that he he was in my bed at like all times, but I don't like I don't know. It's like I think she knows, but she just doesn't want to admit it. And how old was he? He was oh sixty, Oof. something like that. Oh yeah. Well, good. I'm glad he's dead. How would he die? I hope it's, uh, I hope um, he was attacked by know. ants. <laughs> I really do. I, you know, you know my, you know my hope is for this guy mm -hmm. that he was uh, attacked uh, out on the Serengeti by hyenas. Like a mm -hmm. pack of hyenas just took him down. Like eight hyenas just uh, tore just apart. tore him apart. Yeah, and that he lived as long as possible. Yeah. But All right. Now listen. Here's the good news. Your mom was molested. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure. That's why she can't she can't get at that material. She can't yeah. acknowledge that in you. She said she was raped, but she never like brought up like the molest. Yeah, well, yeah. where's her dad? Like her, like my grandparents are like dead. All of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever know them? No, nah, they all died before I was born. Okay, listen, Flo. Yeah. Here's part of the program. Here's why I'm here, beside the paycheck. <sighs> it, it's to it's to stop girls like you from giving birth to somebody who's going to be victimized. Mm -hmm. There's two things we need you to do in your life. We need you to not be victimized anymore, and we need you not to bring onto this planet another victim. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to worry about the guys you're with. Yeah. Because you're going to fall prey to uh, a lot of bad guys out you're there. You're going to be attracted to them, not fall prey. You're going to seek them out. Yeah. Because, like, I have, like, my, my uncle's neighbor, like, you know, I've... But my mom's friend's neighbor, she had a daughter also, and I think she was sexually abused. Yeah. And but we never really discussed that, and All I, right. I don't want to bring it up because I'm afraid like she'll find out. Listen, you, you, you need to tell as many people as possible, though. Your mom is is rid ridiculous, pain in the neck. She's in denial. She's an alcoholic. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen. I, I I I hate to have to break this news to you, but I'm sure you already know your your mom's a mess and a write off. Mm -hmm. You got your whole life to hate her. Right now, you got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. You need to talk to a counselor at school. You need to rely on your friends. You need to be very careful about the guys you associate with. Yeah, because, like, all of them, like, I'm afraid to talk to, like, a lot of them. Listen, talk to a counselor at school and throw yourself on the mercy of that counselor and stop trying to Deal you, you're mom. beating a yeah. dead horse with your mom i mean literally your yeah. mom got molested raped or whatever a million years ago she's knee deep in her alcohol she and she's gone yeah, she can't. she's not available for you yeah <laughs> she's a wonderful individual and 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 I, I i'm sorry that i hate flo's mom for what she's done to flo because i know she's just a not she's just flo 20 years from now that's right paul Oh, uh, yes, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah? You're 28, yes. Yeah, Dr. Drew, sometimes when I urinate, it seems like some white type of fluid comes out. Some, it looks like kind of urinate mixed with sperm. Is that possible? It's possible. You want any medication? No. Where, where are you calling from, the hydroelectric plant? Uh, no, from a cell phone. I'm sorry. I see. Well, it really sounds like there's a lot going on back there. The cell phone in the subway station. No, freeway. Anyway, I window see. open. Okay. What could this be, Drew? Uh, it, it could be sperm. It could be pus. It could be just mucus. It's something that needs to be evaluated, Paul. Well, it doesn't hurt at all, though. It, Paul? It, it, Paul? Yes? I can't magically know what it is. Okay, uh, it doesn't help at all. All right. It needs to be evaluated. It could be pus. It could be sperm. It could be mucus. Whatever it is, it needs, it needs a diagnosis right now. How do you do that? See a urologist. All right. 
I put him on hold because his line was bad. I didn't feel like arguing with him more yeah. about why he didn't need his penis looked at, yeah. even though he called the show and said he was uh, peeing pus. Scott? Scotty's still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. So Scott was 14. He called uh, a few moments ago. He was uh, at this shooting that took place in San Diego. At the high, it was high school, right? High school, yeah. Are you okay now? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, you know. Still a little scary, though. Yeah. And really, were you really standing by watching this unfold? Yeah, pretty much. The guy, he was in a bathroom and started shooting out from the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And um, I was I was about 20 to 30 feet. And, you know, at first I thought it was like a prank because there's lots of morons, you know? Right. And uh, I saw some guy on the ground. And, you know, I didn't see any blood, so I still thought it was fake. But all these people just started running by and stuff. So we got kind of scared, me and my friend, and we ran. And... Pretty soon we, we were just herded into this classroom, you know, and we had to sit there for 40 minutes until some, like, SWAT guy came in and um, told us to file out single file with our hands on our heads. Mm-hmm. And we had to go out parking lot across the street, and then they called our parents or whatever, and then they had to find us. Mm. And uh, are you doing all right now? I'm kind of sad because one, one of my friends died. Oh, my God. Yeah. Was this a close friend of yours? Well, not really close, you know, but we hung out... Um, I used to be on the same pole vaulting team as him. Hmm. Oh. And you know, how, how old? How old were the kids that died? Um, seventeen and fourteen. Mm. Although sometimes they I don't know what kind of answer we hold on to. What answer fun. would be it's okay? Like, <laughs> yeah, one guy was in his late sixties. The other, I think, uh, was seventy-four. <laughs> it was like a couple of high school kids died. I, I mm. mean, I would assume average age fifty and sixteen, yeah. right? Yeah. But you got to hear it again, and then you got to go. Oh. I still, even even as I was running, no matter no even, no matter how hard, I still, I'll tell you, there'd be a little small part of my brain going, "We're out of school, oh, Christ, we don't go back today." Oh my God. I I just want you. To, I'm giving you some insight. Yeah. To my mind, I, I'm I'm getting it. My there would be. I guarantee you, no matter even if ten of my friends died, even if it's the biggest tragedy of my life, there would be a small part of my brain thinking, "We ain't going back." We can go into third period. We're out you'd, for the you'd day. be appreciative for your friend's sacrifice. Be very small. There'd be a very small piece of my mind saying that, or medium size. <laughs> All right, Scott. Listen, I'm sorry to. Uh, I'm sorry this happened to you. Have you talked to any counselors or anything? Um, no, I haven't yet. You know. Do you have any insight in all this? What What led to it? What? Uh... You know, I don't know. The kid just seemed, you know, so regular and everything. He wasn't really picked on. He wasn't. What? He wasn't picked on. He wasn't, yeah, I mean, just like by his friends, like teasing me and stuff. Right. You know, I've, I've even hung out with him a couple of times, and he just seemed so normal. What were they teasing him for? Just being, like, kind of skinny and little. Yeah. Mm. All it right. It wasn't, you know, like, really harsh stuff. It was just like his friends teasing him and stuff. What got him to stop? Did they know? Did he just run out of ammunition? Why did um, he, he surrender? I hear he had extra ammo, but uh, the uh, the people just told him to drop the weapons, you know, the police, and he did. And after that, how'd the police get there so fast? Hmm? How'd the police get there so fast? Um, I don't know, but it was really great. They're within like five minutes. We have like a substation, right? Oh, I see. Um, Yeah, I'll tell you. If I if I was the dad, I'd be I'd be uh, thinking you are so grounded. Oh man, where do I get hold of you? Oh, you know what that dad's all about, though. No, it's it's like the dad and. uh, what was the movie? The with? Great Santini. No, no. <laughs> Thank God he had Rodney a lot Dangerfield of... played. Uh, oh, Woody Harrelson's dad. Yeah, Natural Born Killers. Yeah, yeah. But let me let me float this one to you, Drew. I know your theory is there must be a rhyme and a reason. A and B equals C. My theory. You just you just had a diatribe about that about an hour ago. All right, shut up for a second, would you? A and B equal C. Yeah. Right. But we all know from doing this show that there's a lot of A and B that doesn't always equal C. I mean, there's a lot of physical abuse, mm-hmm. a lot of emotional abuse, mm-hmm. and a very small amount of guys snapping a twig and right. going on shooting sprees. Yes. Um, for a guy to really go on a shooting spree like this, my theory is, is yes, the home life can't be the greatest. Mm-hmm. But on another thing, these guys are almost genetically predetermined to spaz at some point in life. Maybe. I mean, there's a certain amount of the population. Thank God it's a very small 
amount of the population, but almost a certain amount who are going to be serial killers, who are going to do these kind of things at school, that there's almost no looking out for it. There's almost no um, uh, preventing it in a way. It's just there's, let's not have guns everywhere. Let's not give these guys the tools. Mm. There's a certain amount of these guys that are on the planet, and I think they're always going to be here. They're white males, and it seems to work that way. Yeah. And sometimes there wasn't abuse mm. in, the, in the family. Well, we can look, and we'll be back. Yeah. Truly like another fart going here. Very gamey. I guess turnabout's fair play, as they say. I, now I heard that one, Drew, so emotionally it's effing with me, you know. I can't tell if I'm getting something or not. You should be able to tell. Yeah, yeah, I think I am, yeah. All right, let's uh, Cisco in here, everybody, on uh, Wednesday night. We're in uh, San Diego tomorrow night. 7 o'clock. That's right, UC. Oh, I wish I knew the name of the auditorium at UC San Diego. Yeah. Joan? Yeah? You're 16. What's up, Tuts? Okay. Like, I don't know if this is normal or not, but it's kind of, like, irregular. I don't know. But, like, the inner flaps of my vagina, they, like, hang out an extra inch. And there's, like, a clumpage at the bottom. Clump, clumpage? Yeah. It's, like, purple. Nice. Where's the bottom? Like... Hold on, Drew. I think that fart's floating over this way now. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, yeah. That's bad times. Very bad times in here, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's the bottom mean? Like, underneath. Like, right where my vagina is. Okay. Um, yeah, so you got one of those things going. That, that's a common thing. Hey, yeah, there's a certain percentage of women that have that. Oh, okay. Guys don't care. Okay, nah, you know. Not really. Now, wait a minute. You got the outer lips and the inner lips? Yeah. And the inner the inner lips hang out lower than the outer lips, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that gives that kind of um, tulip effect. I, I mean, that... Well, I mean two lips. Yeah, I don't mean two lips. But, but uh, tr it, it, like trumpets, uh, they call it... Uh, hey, what, what is that flower that sort of does that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right. Not a tulip? And maybe it is a tulip, yeah. Rhododendron? You no, know, it is a tulip, right? <laughs> yeah. It's it like a funnel shape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there's a little... Now, what's the clump? The clump? You said there's a little clump well, at the like, bottom. Where, like, the limp lips, like, fall out. There's, like... It, like, right. just, like, yeah. clumps up. Yeah. It's... it's uh, uh, There's certain... I don't know. What percentage of women have this? Five uh, percent? Probably, at least. You ever okay. seen this in a gal, Drew? Yeah. Yeah, Drew's been around. Hey, uh, Joan? Yeah? Here's the thing, though. All you got to do is, uh, you know, don't don't shave the hair down there. You know, okay. Kind of hide things. Okay. I mean, if you don't like the way it looks. And there are procedures, believe it or not, that can repair that. Yeah, but it's all cosmetic, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I really, I, I thought about this. I was looking at a Playboy. Yes. Or, or, I don't know what it was, big brown jugs or something. And, and I realized... That look isn't a real attractive look. Right. Most guys don't enjoy that too much. You know, it's a little, it looks a little... Uh, Not for pictures. A little disheveled down there, a yeah. little scattered. Looks like, a, looks like it needs to be organized. Right. The vagina's a mess. And, all right, don't shave the hair. You grow that little beard, you don't know. So that hangs down. You know what I mean? Good times. Good times. Yeah, yeah it's like, hey, if, you, if you, you got a scar on your chin, you grow a goatee. Right? You farting again over there? No, no, no. You look like you're working. Mark? Yeah. You're 22. What's up? Yeah, I, uh, I have a girlfriend that I've been with for about a year and a half. We have a baby. The baby's four months old. She's fine. Uh, my problem is, though, her whole pregnancy from day one and until now, I haven't been attracted to her. Uh, I cheat constantly. I masturbate. At least three times a day whenever I have the chance and uh you know I love this girl and uh I just don't know what my problem is you know I've had a a drug problem since I was 14 well this is all this is all part of your addiction uh, all right. I've sniffed coke when I was 17 until present I've quit I can't stand the drug anymore the only thing that I do constantly now is I drink all right. why don't, on behalf of your wife and child why don't you get into recovery what's that <laughs> you know, recovery. The, oh. the sexual compulsivity, the sexual addiction qualities that you're manifesting are part of your overall addictive disease. 
And unless you get that treated, the consequences are going to mount here and your marriage is in jeopardy. And unless well, you do something about this, it's going to get worse. I'm not married. She's my girlfriend. All right, your relationship is in jeopardy. Okay. Unless you do something about this, this now, is going to be a disaster. I have a total, I have this uh, thrive towards any other woman but her. I don't understand it. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Listen to me. You listen to, you, do you listen to this show? Oh, uh, all the time. I, uh, it's the first right. time I've been all able right. to get on right. for months. Do you, you have a little girl? Yes, four months. Okay. Do you hear about what goes on with these poor girls in their lives with their alcoholic dads that are cheating that are screwing around you get yourself some goddamn help on behalf of this uh, five week old or four month old little girl of yours so she doesn't call this goddamn show 15 years from now complaining about uh, having a three way with a 65 year old uh, guy and his, his alcoholic brother don't screw that girl up you got to get your ass together, you people. Do you hear me? Or don't be parents. One or the other. Don't want to get your ass together? Fine. Don't do it. Don't have kids. Have kids? Get your ass together. That's your choice. One or the other. It's not both. After this. Yep. Well, there you go. Another fabulous love line in the can. Cisco in here uh, Wednesday night. We're going to be in uh, San Diego, UC San Diego, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And then we'll be broadcasting from uh, 91X, our uh, faithful San Diego companion for many, many years. They were one of the first ones on board yep. with this show. They're still with us, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. We'll be at 91X uh, tomorrow night. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.